All right, hey, what is going on, guys? This is ZK, and welcome to another scripting basics tutorial. We're going through the very basic fundamentals of scripting for Call of Duty World at War, so you guys can build awesome content for your custom zombies maps. I do want to point out as a disclaimer that I am not a professional at this, so do not expect a college level perfection education here okay i'm just gonna try to explain the basic uh, fundamentals of how this stuff works and then as we go along with this series we'll get into more detailed and more um specific things like scripting perks and those types of things but what we're doing right now is we're just focusing on the fundamentals so you guys can learn how to do this all yourself i don't want you to just copy me or copy and paste what i'm doing i want you to start to learn what's going on so that you can do all of this stuff yourself in our previous video, we talked about the if and else functions. Today, we're going to talk about the while function. Now, the while function is what's called a looping function, okay? And looping functions are kind of like, imagine a circle, and like the circle, you know, you start at one point in the circle, you go all the way around, and once it gets back to that point, it just continues to go around again. So a looping function, what it does is it starts at the beginning, and it goes all the way to the end, and then as soon as it gets to the end, it jumps back up to the beginning and runs again. And it'll continue to run that way over and over and over and over and over again until you tell it to stop. So once the while function has been called, it will continue to run whatever you're telling it to do over and over and over again until you tell it to stop. Okay, so let's get into this here a little bit, and let's show you what a while function actually is, so how you implement it into the syntax of functions. So here we got the, my function, okay? This is the function that I would call if I want to start running this whole thing. I define my a variable as one, I define my b variable as two, everything's enclosed in these brackets, and while still being enclosed to the brackets, we start the while function. So it's just while, just the regular word while, and then you do the parentheses, and we're just gonna put a one in here right now. We'll talk about what this actually does in a later video, but for now just put one so basically the while function is gonna run if one equals one okay so just ignore it for now we're just gonna do that as the basic thing okay so now you do a bracket and you do your closing bracket okay because again this is like the if-else function every function that you call here just like this one has to be enclosed in these brackets so we've got our while function and it's enclosed in the brackets so what this function will do is it will start at the beginning right here and it will run whatever is in here like so and then get to the end and then it will jump back up to the beginning run the exact same thing this can be uh, very useful for perks you'll definitely use it in perks when you'll call while functions to always be checking if the player is doing this and this and that or whatever but we're gonna focus with something basic let's incorporate some of the stuff we learned in our last video which was the if else function so let's say that I wanted to if a equals one, okay, which it does, of course. Then we would do another bracket like so, and then it will do this and close off the bracket. If a equals two, like that, then we do da 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 da. -da. Oops, need to fix that bracket there, like so. Okay. So now what we have here is a while function that's going to run through here. It's gonna check if a equals one, and if it does, it's gonna do that. If a equals two, it's gonna do that. And then once it gets to the end, right here, it's gonna jump right back up to the beginning and do the exact same thing. Now the problem with what I just set up is that there, the while function will be, well, if you went in game right now, okay? Let's just say that. If you went in game right now and you ran this function, you would get, as soon as you called my function one here, you would get about a two or three second game freeze. And then uh, if you looked in the console after that freeze, when the game returns to normal, it's gonna say infinite script loop, okay? And what that is saying is that this function is gonna run so fast and so infinitely that the game had to shut it down and cancel it out, okay? So what you have to do in a while function is there has to be some kind of a wait. So what I usually do is you do this, wait 0.05 and you, so, what this does, this function, the wait function, okay, you can call it like this too if you want, um, like so. Some people do it like that. You don't have to though because the wait is built into the, the syntax. So what this is actually going to do is it's going to, once the while function here checks if a equals one and a equals two and gets down to here, it's gonna wait 0.05 seconds and then jump back up to the top. Now it has to be at least 0.05 seconds anything less than that you're still gonna get the infinite script loop okay so it has to be like this you could do it so that you want to wait one and one is one second or if I wanted it to wait five seconds 
five seconds, okay? So what adding this wait function allows you to do is it allows you to tell the while function how many seconds it has to wait before running again. So it'll check if A equals one, check if A equals two, then it will wait five seconds, and then because it gets to the end here, it jumps back up to the beginning. So what we have here is we have a very simple function that's checking variables every five seconds, okay? So it's as simple as that. So now, let's say for example that you are using this function and it's doing what it's supposed to do and then you want to cancel it, right? So you want, let's say for example that if a equals one, we want da 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 da, if a equals two, da 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 da, but if b equals two, which it does, we want the function to stop running. We want our while function to quit, right? So what do we have to do in that scenario? There are a couple of different ways to do it. We're just gonna talk about one for now. It's called break, okay? It's just the word break with a semicolon, okay? I should actually mention that you have to do have semicolons at the end of all your command lines, okay? <laughs> Otherwise you'll get a bad syntax and you'll get a bad syntax this way too because you don't have this obviously, this variable isn't defined. I'm just using it as an example to just put there so you can see what's going on. Anyway, so what, what happened now in this scenario, okay? B does equal two, okay, and A does equal one. So what's gonna happen here is the while function, once it's run, okay, it's gonna check if A equals one, then it's gonna run this, and then it's going to skip this because A doesn't equal two. It'll get down to here to B equals two, which is right there, and then it will break the function. So once that break has been activated, this entire function is going to stop, okay, and it will not go again until you call my function again. And we'll talk about calling fun functions in the next video. Right now, just focus on this. So once you call this break, it stops this function dead in its tracks and it no longer does anything, okay? That's how you stop the looping function here with the break. There are other ways you can do it, but we're not gonna talk about them yet. Um, you'll see the benefits of why you would use other uh, methods of stopping the while function. But in any case, let's say I was to do this if b equals three and a equals one, okay? This function will continue to run forever and ever and ever until I define that b equals two because it's always checking for b equals two and if it never does, this break is never gonna be called and this function is going to continue to run over and over and over and over again, okay? You see that? So let's say for example that, yeah, I want it to run this, okay? But once it runs that, I want it to jump back to the beginning of the function so that we don't get, um, it, so it doesn't call any of these other ones, okay? Now, you may not see the, the reason for that because, again, the while function is always gonna start here and it's gonna run all the way down to the bottom and then go back up no matter what. It's never gonna skip anything, okay? So what you may wanna do at some point is you'll want it to just run this and then if A does equal one, you're gonna want it to stop here and go back to the beginning right away and then continue down again. So what you do in that scenario is you use a continue. Oops, wow, just totally messed that one up. <laughs> you use just the regular word continue with the semicolon, okay? And what continue does is basically it continues back to the beginning, okay? It's kind of like a return, but not exactly. What the continue does is as soon as it's called, it jumps back to the beginning of the function and continues to run back through it where there is the break just cancels everything, the continue forces the while function to stop here and then go back to the beginning. So in most cases in your while function, you'll wanna have a continue everywhere except for the one instance where you want the function to stop working. So you would generally have a continue here and here because you don't want the function to continue to run back down through here because Again, it depends on what you're scripting, but for the most part, I try to use the continue in all of them because I don't want the function after it runs this to continue down and run these because I could end up having def redefining A inside of here and I don't want A to for this function to continue to run because I've defi redefined A as something else. You see what I'm saying? So maybe you're a bit confused when I brought that up, okay? Don't worry, it'll make perfect sense when we start getting into actual um, uh, using this stuff to our benefit in the script. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about calling functions and then um, in that same uh, video with calling functions, we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys how to implement these functions into the scripts. We're gonna paste our function into an actual script and I'll show you how to call it, um, how to implement your function if you wanna do a separate 
um, GSC file. Um, we can do that too. And then after that, we're gonna talk about moving into actually doing something with your script and having it interact with your .map file. Um, like in the sense that in your game, you can actually start to make the scripts do stuff in your map, like you know, playing effects or or spawning models or those types of simple things like that. And we're gonna use these functions that we have learned, the while, the if and the else, and all that kind of stuff to start doing stuff in your map. And it's gonna be pretty cool because we won't have to work with A equals one anymore. We can start doing things like, um, like for example, we can do, um, let's see, effects spot, which doesn't matter. Like we can define this as whatever our, you just find it as YouTube effects spot equals get entity my fx spot comma target name boom and there we go now we have a variable that's going to get something in our map that has the target name my fx spot and then we can start using this variable down here and say well if this variable equals blah 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 blah, blah and we can start doing those types of things where you, the stuff will actually start to apply rather than just learning abstract information but again these first few videos are just learning the fundamentals so that you guys can learn how to do this stuff on your own and script awesome stuff to make that spice that Mexican spice in your map. Sorry if I offended anyone with that. But anyway, <laughs> with the, get the spice in your map that, that's really fun for everybody when you have custom scripts in there that are actually made by you rather than copied and pasted from a tutorial or something, which is okay too, but it's a lot more fun to, to build stuff on your own. So thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos, gameplays, tutorials, um, anything like that, and keep up to date with Malibu Drive. Um, I'm gonna be doing a trailer pretty soon here. It'll be a shorter trailer, and then after that, I'll move into a longer trailer. So thank you guys very much for watching, and this is ZK signing off.